Dream in my soul And I won't let it go They're trying to keep me down But I just get higher oh, Yeah, that's how we're going to start it off Are you guys ready? What's up guys? Are you? My name's Travis Brady And I'm so pumped to be with you here today Because we're going to be breaking down your entire brand in this next hour and a half so super privileged to be here i'm super pumped i put a lot into this um over years of trial and error thousands of clients um and not to mention just the presentation itself so i'm super pumped to be here today so i want to share my screen with you and so today we're going to be talking about how to grow and scale your business through your business brand foundation, okay? The eight year to eight week branding blueprint. So hopefully that you're focused on what we're gonna be talking about here today. No kids, no house of noise, put your phone to the side, make sure you have a notebook, okay? That has your thoughts, all right? Writing all this stuff down, okay? because it's gonna transform your life. It's gonna transform your business. And if one hour could transform your life and business, how would you approach it? Okay, yes, that is a rhetorical question. <laughs> how would you approach a training that could absolutely change your life and business? Okay, for me, it would be pushing everything aside, making sure I have the next, okay, 90 minutes dedicated to just focusing on this, okay? I promise I'm not going to waste your time. I also promise there's not going to be some sleazy uh, sales pitch at any time during this presentation. Okay, I, I get that your guards are up sometimes, your shield is up, your Captain America shield is up, and you're like, what are they trying to sell? I have nothing to sell you here today. In fact, I only have free stuff. Okay, My goal is to help you create the it life, create more influence, income, and time freedom. And so that's why I'm here. And my boy, Max, hi Max, come here, come here. He's always hanging out with me in the office. So he's gonna, he's gonna be hanging out with us too. So I named him Maximus Decimus Meridius. As you can see, I got the um, face mask in the back, right? And um, I named him that because uh, why not? <laughs> I mean, that's a badass name. And so um, he's gonna be hanging out with us today. Okay, so we're gonna have some fun. My goal is to make this edutaining. Okay, I'm gonna educate you and entertain you at the same time. So again, make sure you have notes. Okay, what will you walk away with? Okay, we're gonna be talking about how your branding foundation can help you 10x your income, 10x your influence, and 10x your time freedom. I refer to that as the it life. Okay, at the end of the day, that's what we all want, right? We want to be able to say, I've went to bed, I've impacted somebody, I've made a lot of money doing it, and now I have the time freedom to do what I want to do, right? Instead of always being a servant to your clients and always being a servant to your money. Okay, so we're going to really be going deep in that. And if you stay to the end, and hopefully you're already bought into it, I mean, if you're not planning on watching this for 90 minutes, like just turn it off right now, like save yourself the time and just turn it off. However, okay, if your goal is to create multiple six and seven figure business, okay, and even down the road, eight figures, this is the thing that's gonna help you do it, okay? So I have an amazing free gift at the end that I promise that you're gonna want, okay? So make sure you stay to the end. Okay, a little bit about me, okay? Um, I've been coaching for collectively 18 years, uh, speaking for 11. Uh, I have a coaching and branding agency and we help people scale their business through the brand, okay, which is the foundation of the business. I've been featured on uh, Digital Journal, Yahoo, I mean, you see it all there. Um, I've been on every major television station. I have two podcasts, blah, 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 right? Um, I'm not here to try to impress you. I'm here to press upon you that you can do some amazing things too. Okay, you can create the life and the business that you've already wanted. And if you're listening to this, you're probably already on the way there, right? And what I told um, 
my clients and my followers, like people don't follow us or hire us because we're the ones that make them successful. Okay. People work with us because they decided already inside their mind and then their heart, okay, their mind, their spirit that they're going to be successful and they know that the things we have are the things that they need in order to create that, okay? So you can absolutely do it. Um, a little bit about my story real quick is I grew up sports. You can tell in the background, I have the Ute football there. Um, it was a dream of mine. Look at, look at me right there. Look at that beefcake. That's about 30 pounds more than I am right now. Um, I used to work with the University of Utah as a strength and conditioning coach. I was a personal trainer. I worked with Westminster. Um, but I just got into the personal training right out of high school. You know, once I, <clears throat> once I came to the conclusion that maybe being a professional athlete wasn't my fate. Okay. And so I got into the personal training, ended up doing competitions, helping other people transform their lives. And as a result of getting really, really deep into that, I felt like I lost myself um, or maybe I never even really found what I represented as a person. I felt like my entire life was defined by everything outside of me. How did my body look? How did, what kind of car did I drive? Did I have a house? Did I have a girlfriend? How many friends did I have? Like everything that made me was outside of me. And I came to this place where, you know, <clears throat> if I'm really to be this confident individual and go to those places that I really want to go in life, then I got to start building Travis Brady by the inside out. Okay. And so that's what I started to do. So the work on what do I, what do I want to represent as an individual? Who is Travis Brady? Okay. Dad, friend, brother, uncle, um, <laughs> dog dad, um, you know, cousin, uh, influencer, speaker, leader, coach, branding expert, like all of these are just titles and they're rep. It's, it's how I express myself. They don't define who Travis Brady is. Right. And so at that moment in my life, I really started to transform myself and started to become so much more confident. And then I started looking at my clients going, man, I feel like I'm building monsters just by focusing on the external. Okay, who are they on the inside? And so this is my favorite shirt right here, Lift Heavy Cuddle Puppies. Um, and so I really started just to embrace me and, and who I was and I started to feel better. I started to feel more confident, more peace um, in who I was. And then I just started to get better results with clients. And then I had other personal trainers come in my way saying, hey, what are you doing? How do I build a personal training business? So I naturally started to help them. So I was no longer just a personal trainer. It was mind and body transformation coach and then i started to help the personal trainers and as i started to help them okay what i realized is that they were struggling with the same things that you know my clients were which is they didn't really know what they wanted to represent from the inside out and in the business world okay that's referred to is the brand what's your mark who are you you can't build something okay without putting you into it okay if, if you see right here, I'll get a little bit closer so you can see it, but it has a, it's a cross with an American symbol on it. And so this just represents some of my deepest beliefs. I believe in America, America, right? And I believe that it's the land of opportunity. We have so many amazing things in this country. Is it perfect? No. Is there shit going on? Yeah. But at the end of the day, I feel like we're really blessed to be in this country. And so I stand for what, um, for what the flag symbolizes, right? And then I believe in Jesus' story. I believe in Christ. So I guess that would make me a Christian. I would say I'm more spiritual. Um, I believe in God, but you know, this is this is what this represents. And so everything I build, okay, is with that in it. You know, God said you can't create something, or God said we were created in his image. Why? Because I don't believe God could have created us without being in his image, right? You can't create something unless you put you into it, whether this is conscious or subconscious, okay? And so as I started to help people, they started to make more money. They started to get more clients. They started to feel more confident. They started to have more time freedom. They started to create that it life. And so I went on the news talking about this, speaking about it, okay? And then inevitably... It went into business and branding coaching and it evolved into an agency when I realized people just don't need coaching, okay? 
They need a team. They need a network. They need people to actually help them follow through and get these things done. And so that's when I said, hey guys, I know you're helping me. What do you think about coming on and helping these clients? So that's when the agency formed. And so we've been going for seven years now and it's been amazing. And I work with some of the coolest, awesomest, is that word, awesomest people in the world. Um, athletes, uh, big brand names, Drew Manning, uh, uh, done work for Jimmy Rex, um, uh, Dan Clark, world famous Hall of Fame speaker, right? And so it's just, it's been super awesome. And so I want to teach you, okay, all the things that I've taught thousands of people over the years, okay? Because my goal is to help you build a brand and build a team, okay? And a team has to stand for something, okay? Before a team can stand for something, someone has to stand up and see a vision, okay? So I've had the privilege of working with thousands of people over the years, um, clients that have gone on news, hosted their own mastermind, so it's been rewarding. And again, we help them create their brand, okay, and their graphics. And uh, this is just a few examples of the things that we've done, but we're gonna go much, much deeper into the branding conversation because a brand, okay, is not just some superficial thing that we use to showcase, okay? That's not what branding is. Okay, branding is about building us from the inside out and then showcasing that same thing on the inside, on the outside, so the world can see it. Okay, so we're gonna go way, way deep into the conversation. Okay, a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to uh, speak on the same stage as Grant Cardone, meet him backstage at a VIP party. Um, super cool guy, right? Grant, if you don't follow Grant Cardone, then what are you doing? <laughs> he's he's the uncle g of the industry and uh i just love what he's all about his mentality his uh will to want to do bigger and better things and so um so i've learned a lot from him over the years but at the event this was a question from the audience what's the most important part of my business i can focus on to 10x my business in the next year okay and i turn to um our client manager, okay, Melissa Green, who was there with me, and I said, I know what he's gonna say. He's gonna say, dude, you need a 10X your brand, man. You gotta build a brand, dude. And then it's sure as shit, as soon as I said that, as soon as I said that, that's exactly what he said, okay? I gotta build a brand. The brand is the foundation, okay? Dan Clark <clears throat> once said, we don't rise to the occasion. We fall to our foundation, okay? And I thought that was really interesting. I think in some cases we do rise to the occasion, but at the end of the day, we're always gonna default to that foundation in our life, in our business, and who we are, and that foundation is your brand. It's your mark, it's your identity, it's your being, okay? So years ago when I was evolving from business coaching to branding, I had this conversation with this uh, past, uh, president of the National Speakers Association is out in the hall and I was talking to him and I was just sharing a little bit about what I was doing and the new things that were uh, coming up. I'm going to raise my chair here. And um, he said something to me that really hit me hard. He said, I've noticed it takes about people eight years to find their true authentic brand. And when he said that to me, I was like, eight years and then I started to kind of think about you know my journey and everything that I've been through and everything that I learned and I started to really ponder on that I was like you know what you're right it does take people about eight years but then the more I thought about it is like why why does it take people eight years to come to this place where they really know what their brand is and what they want to represent Okay, within the business. And so I started to ponder that. I went home and I started to ponder that eight years. How can we do it in seven years? What about six? What about five? What about cutting it in half? And the more I did that, so I reverse engineered the process and I brought that from eight years down to eight weeks. Okay. And it's a combination of my experiences, it's a combination of working with clients just as it is for you. And it's a combination of all the coaches and mentors you've hired. And I've had some pretty awesome coaches. This is Chrissy Richards. She helped me get going with my events. Elliot Hulse, 
um, probably where I get the majority of my transformation knowledge tools. Um, Kirk Duncan was huge at the very beginning of my career. Okay, Brandon Bouchard, Grant Cardone, Keaton Hoskins is uh, turned into a good friend. He's blown up like crazy. Um, Ty Bennett uh, talks about power of storytelling. So I just had a lot of amazing uh, influences over the years. So in this presentation, I'm going to be breaking it down from those eight years and how do we bring it down to eight weeks and some of the things that we go through. Okay. Because it's hard being a leader, right? It's hard standing up and saying that you have a message and you have a business and a product and a service that can transform the world, right? Or transform someone's life. And so we kind of go through these common things that everyone go through. And some of those things is, you know, I don't feel like I'm good enough yet. Uh, I, maybe I'm not a leader, okay? If I'm just good, people will just come, okay? Sometimes we feel like an imposter, okay? I can't trust people. There's too much competition. I just need someone in the market for me. Okay, I don't want to put myself out there in the limelight. So I don't know if you've held any of these beliefs, but these are common things that every leader comes across when building a business. Okay, And so through the branding process, when we're doing it right, it's going to create a brand new you. Okay, I'm going to say that again. When we go through a correct branding process, okay, we overcome a lot of the limiting perceptions and the limiting beliefs within us by building that brand. You want a brand new you, then build a brand. Building a brand helps create a new evolved version of you. So when you, if you're scared of putting yourself out there, scared of doing videos, scared or nervous of doing bigger things in your business, what that really tells me and what I have learned over the years is you're just unclear about your mark and your brand. There's something missing there. And so we're gonna be talking about some of these beliefs that come up and they happen to everybody, okay? It's the leader's journey. I also refer to it as the coach's journey, okay? Leaders speak the language of coaching, okay? Every leader speaks the language of coaching, okay? A leader's job is to help influence people so they believe do and have something different. Okay. So I often use those change, those words interchangeably. Okay. So we're going to be going through this, understanding the importance of branding, unveiling your journey, discovering how you've been influenced, creating your brand messages, creating a brand culture. Okay. Building your foundations, connecting with customers and clients, and then sharing your stories with clients as well. So we're going to get all into that. Okay. And I feel like where we first get caught up in, okay, is like we just don't understand that branding is important. We think it's some superficial thing that we create to say something that we're not. And that's not what branding is. Okay. That's like saying, I'm going to buy a car to help me feel more confident. I'm going to buy this suit and hopefully I look sexier. Like we're trying to build ourselves from the outside in and you know this, right? I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. You already know this right now. And so when it comes down to it, okay, your brand is the mark you leave in the world. Okay. And there's three aspects to the branding. Okay. And the one that everyone thinks about is the graphics and the uniform. Okay, when you give people a workbook, is it just some PDF with words on it or is it a really good put together book that has graphics? Okay, the way we perceive something is everything. Okay, why don't people just print out their book on some paper and hand it to everybody, right? It's cheaper, it's easier, it's the same information, right? But they don't take it seriously right and so that's just part of it is having the uniform and having the graphics okay the other part of it and so disney is a great perspective and you can see how their uniform okay has really evolved over the years and i'm going to show you an example here a little bit later in the <clears throat> in the presentation okay the next one is what's your formula okay what makes you next gen what do you do that's different unique Okay, um, and innovative. That is being next gen. Okay, different, unique, and innovative. By default, all we've done across the history of the world is we take something, okay, we learn from it, we use it, and then we go, you know what? 
how can I make this better? Okay, how can I improve upon this? And that's why they come out with a different car every year, like a different um, upgrade. It has different features. So by default is a human being, we are next gen. Okay, so what is that? How do we show that in a way that people can really see? And so a great example is Henry Ford. Okay, and I love this quote. If I would have asked people what they wanted, they would have told me faster horses. Okay, sometimes your client really doesn't know what they need or what they want until they actually see it. Okay, um, you know, and, and so it's your job to put that together so they can actually see it. And so Henry Ford and how he built the vehicle is he learned about an engine from a German engineer. Okay, he took, um, he used to work for Tesla, so he learned all about electricity. Okay, and then he learned about the assembly line from a meat packing company. He ended up finding this lighter still from this um, uh, southern country. I can't remember what it was. And so he used that to replace the heavier still. So he just started taking all these components and he put them together. Okay, and, and I know you already have something that's next gen, but are you able to showcase it in a way that people would actually understand? can actually see it, okay? Because if they don't see it, they don't follow it, okay? And then lastly, what's the story? What's the message? What's the core slogan of that, okay? And one of my favorites is Steve Jobs, right? Everything he did, okay, from the marketing to his team, he said, this is about thinking differently, okay? This is about giving people the simple innovative processes they need in order to drive their imagination, okay? And it's about thinking differently. So in everything he did, that was what about, and Steve Jobs did, in fact, put a dent in the universe. I mean, you think about the huge things he did, the iPhone, okay, the, um, the iPod, right? And all he did is build upon the iPod, right, with the phone, he connected multiple things together. Okay, so those are the three components of a brand and we're gonna dive in later to the inspirational message and where does that come from? But week one or year one is essentially understanding that, yeah, people do judge a book by its cover and if they don't follow it, then they don't follow it. If they don't understand it, if they don't see it, so all of these things combined is important into your brand, okay? Week two. Okay, year two, unveiling your journey. You're as only as powerful as you are aware and you're only as potentially harmful, okay, as you are blind, okay? And so what that means is knowing what you've actually been through. And I think as human beings, and I've heard, um, I've, I've heard, oh gosh, what's his name? Dr. Dispenza actually share this. Do you follow Dr. Dispenza at all? And, um, what he said is we as human beings are very much unconscious in what we actually did and how we actually thought to get where we're at today. Okay. And I realized this early on as a personal trainer, right? I'm trying to, I'm reading all this information. I'm getting all the certifications and I'm trying to reiterate this information that I feel like people need in order to get results. And it wasn't working as, a, as effectively as I wanted it to. Okay, and what I realized is I'm coaching from a place of information rather from a place of experiences, okay? And this is what's gonna separate people, okay? Yes, AI is huge and AI is leveling out the playing field, okay? It's artificial intelligence, but there's nothing artificial about human intelligence. And so that's what's gonna set you aside amongst everybody else, okay? Is if you're able to share your wisdom and your knowledge and your journey and your processes from a place of what you've actually gone through. So it's important as a leader to know what are the cycles that I've been through, okay? And we all go through cycles in our life and I have two examples to share. The first one on the right is what's called the cycle of transformation and it's how we essentially um, essentially how we transform we have an experience okay from that experience we generate an idea okay 
from that idea, we feel something. Sometimes the mind and body arrive at the same time as we feel and then we think, okay? Okay, that then spurs another thought. That thought then goes into an action and then the actions lead into another experience, okay? And this is why some people create the same experience over and over. The same experience of being broke over and over. The same experience of their brand not growing over and over. The same experience of getting cheated on over and over. The same experience of whatever it's, it is, right? And so at some point in time in your journey, whatever you do, whether it's personal training, coaching, uh, lawyer, whatever it is, okay, you interrupted this cycle and you started to transform. Okay, and you went through some seasons, you went through some dark times, you went some times of springing up, okay, um, and summertime, full throttle results, and then you fell back into deeper thinking and reflecting and then hibernating, right? So we go through these cycles in life and we go through these cycles in our journey to be where we're at today. And so the more we're conscious at unveiling those things we've actually been through, Okay, the more likely we are able to influence people. Because what really influences people okay, is they look at you and they see you and you're able to describe an experience so well and so articulated that they're able to really look at you and go, wow, I felt those same things. I see those same things. And you share it so in depth and we're gonna drop, go into this later that they actually grow through you sharing your experience, okay? They say dumb people don't learn from those experiences. Smart people do learn from those experiences, okay? Wise people learn from the experiences of others, right? Which is why we hire coaches and mentors. A next-gen leader, they're able to share an experience so in-depth and so good because they've unveiled their journey that they're able to share it in a way that everybody grows just through them sharing their experience. So everyone around them is now more wise and takes on some of the perceptions and beliefs that they do just through sharing their story. And so that's what makes leaders leaders is they have a vision that creates clarity for people moving towards them. Okay. Right. And so in the beginning, I coached from information. When I started sharing more experiences, okay, you can't match those, you can't replicate those, you can't copy those. You can copy information, you can copy, okay, um, science, right, and some of the data. You can't reenact or regurgitate experiences, okay? And that's what's gonna set you aside and make you different, unique, and innovative, okay? Going into the next one. Okay, discovering how you've been influenced. To influence, you first have to understand how you've been influenced. Okay, why do people grow up with their dads being truckers and then why do they become a trucker? Why do people grow up, okay, experiencing some of the things that they went through their experience and then they literally reenact that same experience in their life or they're just like their mom, they're just like their dad or they're a version of it. And it's because you influence yourself and you influence the world based upon how you've been influenced, okay? And how we've been influenced is through everything. I mean, you think about, um, you just think about how much, especially if you're a parent, you really start to see this from your kids. You start to see like, man, they say the same things I do. I need to watch my words um, around my son sometimes because he starts to regurgitate him. He starts to do some of the things that I'm doing. Monkey see, monkey do. And the more you can learn those things and see why you are the way you are, how you speak, how you lead, how you talk, how you treat people, um, how you approach friendships, how you approach relationships, how you approach business, like all these things, like the more you can discover that, the more you can influence people, okay? And I love this little illustration right here because when I influence this person, then I can influence this and I get good at influencing that person and regurgitating a really clear message that person then can influence the next person. And then that person influences the next person. So there's people all around you, okay, that are waiting to be influenced. 
And what makes a brand leader a brand leader is a brand leader, okay, I want you to write this down, a brand leader creates other leaders. If you want to create the money you want in your life, you have to be able to influence somebody that influences the next person. Okay, I do real estate on the side. I have a property manager. I have to influence that person to influence my tenant to re-sign. I have to influence my team member when they go out and market one of the events. Okay, I influence a coach that then influences another person who's gonna influence another person. So our influence is literally limitless. Okay, um, and that's what brand leaders believe. They believe from the depths of their heart and their spirit that they are incredibly influential because they understand that every interaction, everything they do is influencing people. But first you need to understand that. Okay. And so think about all of the, the current beliefs you have. Okay. They've come from peer pressure. Okay. They've come from authorities, obedience, come from experts, come maybe from culture, right? Have you ever dated someone from a different culture before, right? They have different ideologies, different beliefs, okay? Images, videos, does that not influence us? Okay, perception, things we've consistently done, religion, like think about all the things that have influenced over these years. And so what we, what I have come to believe when we first start looking at this is like, I didn't build me, someone else built me. Now it's my job to get conscious and get aware, go down into that subconscious and go knock in there and be like, dude, why do you believe that ideology? Why do you believe that theory? Okay. Why is like, like, why do you do it this way? And the more you can understand that and see it, the more you can transform it. And the more you can transform it, the more you can transform, okay, your leadership. And you transform the leadership, you transform your brand, transform your business. Like everything you want in life, okay, comes from a form of leadership and influence, okay? So, what brands do you like? Why do you like those brands? Every single day, okay, I always wear, I can't, don't even really see that, but I always wear Under Armour underwear. Under Armour almost everything, okay? Shoes, um, right? L L I do love Lululemon. This is, no, this isn't a Lululemon shirt. Pants are Lululemon, right? And so what brands do you connect with? Why do you connect with them? So the best way to sell something is to really reflect in what have I been sold on? Why do I like Under Armour? Okay, why do I like Coke versus Pepsi? And so we can say these surface level things like I like the clothing or I like the way it tastes, but it's so much more than that. And the more we can see that, okay, and identify with why, or I yeah, identify with why we identify with that, the more we're gonna be conscious in our influence and we can tap into that influential power in our own life and our own brand. Okay, so these are just a few uh, pages from my branding workbook here. Okay, going into week four. So this is essentially what I would refer to as year four, okay? Which is creating your brand messages. Okay, a lot of people believe, well, there's too much there's too much competition out there, right? And there is a lot of competition, but that's what's really gonna separate you from other people. Okay. And your greatest messages come from your greatest messes. People usually hire you because you have been through some type of mess that they're currently going through. Okay, and your ability to articulate that mess in the form of a message helps them connect with you and empathize. Okay. So it's the difference of sympathy versus empathy. What's I always ask people, what's the difference of sympathy versus empathy? Okay. And to me, sympathy is where I go, Oh man, that must've been so hard to where his empathy goes, man. Yeah. I've been through that exact same experience and that is hard. Right. And so our ability to empathize is what connects us as human beings. Right. Okay, sympathy is, is not as connecting as empathy. So our ability to 
put together our brand messages, okay, really helps us connect with the people that we can serve, okay? And they come in the form of these little slogans, eat fresh, it's finger licking good, ideas for life. Like we already talked about Apple, think differently, right? And we'll talk about where these um, slogans can be best created from here in just a second. But one thing that I've heard from people before is they said the English language is a very logical language, okay? It's, um, yeah, it's very, it's very logical, okay? It's very straight to the point, whereas like French and... Um, Spanish and Portuguese and some of these other language, it is more of a poetic type of language, okay? It's more of a visualization. And so the goal of a message and a slogan or catchphrase or whatever you want to refer to it as, okay, is to pack so much emotion and feeling within it that it gets into the emotions of other people and it wants them to change their emotion, okay? They say we don't internalize or memorize things unless there's emotion or an emotion connected to it, okay? I'm gonna say that again. We don't internalize things unless there's an emotion or emotion connected to it, okay? And so the more we can pack our messages with emotion and motion, and I'll talk about what motion here is in a little bit, Okay, the more likely they're able to be internalized and remembered. Okay, and if people are remembering it, they're going to refer you more. They're going to replicate the message you want better. They're going to sell your service better, right? All the things that you want in your life require for people to replicate that message to the world. Okay, so that's super important. Then this goes into the common thing that a lot of business owners struggle with once they get to this six figure, which is I need to build a team here, okay? And what helps build a brand is not just a brand, but is a culture. A culture builds a brand. A brand builds the culture. The strength of the wolf pack, the wolf is the pack, okay? The strength of the, of the pack is the, is the world. That should say wolf. See, I'm not perfect right there, okay? And so you got to understand that one thing builds another, okay? The stronger, if, if you go to, a, I'm doing a mastermind here for after the Brand X event next year, and we're going to have Keen Hoskins, Drew Manning, Sam Taggart, right? All these amazing people, okay? And when you're in that environment of people talking about the things that they're doing, the business, you know, in everything that are experiencing, you have no choice but to level up to that. It's just this natural thing that starts to happen. Okay, the opposite thing happens. When you're working with, when you're around losers that live with their mom in their 30s or 40s, uh, they're not doing something they're passionate about. They not, they just don't care <laughs> is, is how I feel. Um, you naturally start to lower yourself. Okay, and so the more you can build a culture within your brand, it raises the vibration of your brand. Okay, and so the goal is to create a culture. Okay, which means there needs to be commonalities in words, commonalities in messages. Okay, there needs to be a vision that everyone buys into. Okay, so what are the values of your, of your brand? Okay. Why is that a value? Okay, what are the core values, right? What's your mission statement? Um, one of my uh, friends, he speaks all over the world and he goes to businesses and he says, hey, what's your vision statement? What's your, mi what's your mission statement? And people always stutter and he goes, isn't that funny how we create these mission and vision statements but none of our team members actually remember them? What is a mission statement? What is a vision statement, okay? It's essentially what's your promise as a brand, okay? What's your promise statement, okay? And so that's what building culture is. Here's what we stand for, okay? And if you don't stand for something, you're gonna fall for anything, okay? Same thing with your team members. If you don't give them something to stand for, Okay, they're gonna fall for anything and we wanna create warriors, okay? We wanna create kings, okay? And the more we can give them that vision and give them that culture and the brand, 
the more likely they are to stand for those things, okay? So now you're getting back into like, okay, I got my culture, I'm building some of my brand messages, okay? Now it's like, are these foundations all in place, okay? Am I speaking to all the different types of leaders? Because as you know, we're not all the same, okay? If you're on this presentation right now, you probably connect with me in some way. There's something about me vibrationally, story-wise, um, maybe your dad, you're in the athletes, whatever it is you connect with. And so understand that the more you can talk to the different archetypes and the different leaders, okay, the faster you're able to build your brand. So building a successful business is constructing a skyscraper. It requires solid foundation, okay, and careful planning. Okay, and so sometimes when we're sharing our, when we're trying to build a business, we got us down here and we're trying to carry it all. We're trying to market, we're trying to serve, we're trying to bring in money, okay? And, and we're trying to, you know, do all these things. And imagine if these were blocks, okay? If these were blocks, what would happen, right? It would fall over. And that's how most people run their business, okay? Their marketing is just like this, okay? Their, their services never seem stable. Getting sick, getting sick. You don't get sick when you own your own business. You only get sick when you work for somebody else. You don't get COVID. When you work for someone else, you get COVID, right? You don't get COVID when you work for yourself. You got shit to do. And, and so that's not how it should be, right? We should be able to have a business that stands and grows without us doing every little damn thing all the time. Okay, we should be able to go on vacation and our business can continue to grow in markets, right? So we should be able to do these things. And so part of building a brand is making sure we're speaking to all the different archetypes out there. We're speaking to the lovers who are more influenced through why, like why do you do what you do? Okay, does that why connect with me? It needs to make sense to the logical people, the magicians, the analytical. Okay, do you have a way here? Do you have a process? Okay, do you have an A, B, C, one, two, three? Okay, and if it's not simple enough for me to understand, then I'm just not gonna follow it. Okay, and people might not say that, but that's how they act. Okay, and then you need to be able to talk to the warriors, the action takers, the doers. Okay, you need to be able to talk to the kings and queens, the visionaries, the leaders, the managers. Okay, and the more our brand can wrap all those different archetypes in, in our business, the more we're able to create a better and bigger foundation in what we do. And if we're creating a better foundation, if we know why what we do, what's the way we do it, we know who we're targeting, we know what's the result, okay? Now the marketing game starts to solve itself, okay? When people say I'm struggling with my marketing, really what that tells me is we don't have a firm foundation of what your brand and business is standing for. Otherwise, you would be putting yourself out there marketing. You would naturally know what you need to do and what you need to create to attract those warriors, right? You would know the language that's gonna speak to the kings, okay? So it's important to understand that you need to simply and easily, okay, communicate that. and so. The reason why this is later in the journey is because when I ask people these questions, why do you do what you do? What's the way you do it? Okay, who do you work with and what's the result? It's filled with blah, 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 okay? It's, we're in the goldfish world, right? How long, they say a goldfish has an attention, has a memory of three to four seconds, okay? I don't know how accurate that is, um, but you have to treat social media in your marketing as people have a short attention span, okay? And they're gonna forget details quickly. So if we can't simply state what those things are, okay, to each of the leaders, we lose their attention, okay? And attention's everything, okay? It's all about getting attention these days because if you're not getting attention, okay, then no one can hire you. And if no one can hire you, you're not building a business. If you're not building a business, you're not doing the things that you really wanna do in the world. Okay, so scaling the business and growing to the next level is very, very clearly being able to articulate, okay, these messages, okay? 
week seven going into week so year seven at, at this point in time this is where you start to understand like man i gotta start with where people are at not where i'm at okay so many times as a leader we want to start on step 10 or step 11 right um, one of the questions I asked at one of our events, and I asked this question quite a bit, I said, out of the five phases of business, which is leadership, branding, marketing, your service, and sales, okay, out of those five, leadership, branding, marketing, service, and sales, which one do you feel like is your strongest trait? What's the strongest thing about your business? And here's what the majority of people will say. They will say the strongest part of my business, if we're referring to those five phases, is my service. My service is the strongest of those things. Okay. And I push back a little bit and I go, okay, when you're creating a service, what is the most important part in that service? Okay. And if you have a service, you're creating some type of transformation, coaching, mentoring, lawyer, uh, chiropractor. Um, I mean, every service-based business, you provide some, some type of transformation, right? So your service or your product, if you're saying that's the best thing about it, what is the very most important thing that it needs to do? Okay, most people say transformation, and I disagree. I think that's the second most important thing. The most important thing that your service needs to be able to do is it needs to be able to get people to start from the very beginning. It needs to be able to get people off the couch, okay, off their phones, changing and actually starting the process, okay? So if you're saying your service is the best thing about you, are you actually focused on the number one most important part of that service, which is getting people to start to begin with. Instead of showing up in fear or I can't do this or I'm not ready. Like, isn't that where the transformation really starts is actually showing up and actually starting to do the work. Okay. And that's what the brand does. Okay, is the brand connects with where people are at and it helps them actually get started. Okay, if people don't like, if people don't use your coaching and your programs and your action steps or whatever else it is, if they don't even open up to the idea of it, they can't transform it all. Okay, so by default, the most important part of your business, of the service and everything is to actually open people up to the conversation and to the ideologies and the philosophy that your business can help them solve. Okay, so when, when I say that to most people, I go, how many people would like to change their answer now? Okay. So you got to start with where people are at, not where you're at. Okay. And where you start is you start with a very square one. Okay. Can I p get a person to step from zero to one? Can I get them to come to an event? Can I get them to do my training? Can I get them to a consultation? Can I get them to actually start and open up to the process? Okay. Is this making sense? I'm assuming it does. Um, and, and so, and the reason why I want to articulate this so well and go into it is because this was me years ago. Well, I'm good at what I'm doing. If I'm good at what they do, people will just show up and that's not true. Okay. I remember watching a, a video years ago and this, um, in this video, Tim Tebow was getting trained from this personal trainer and they were doing the stupidest machine exercise and I'm just like, what are they doing? And granted, I didn't see everything that they were doing, but in that moment I was like, why ain't I getting the kind of money that this trainer is getting? Cause I have more certifications. I have more knowledge, but really what, what it was, it was my ego 
basically leaving me stuck and my ego said, you're already good enough. You already know. And so instead of coming from a place of like, hey, maybe there's something more I can learn. Obviously, he's training Tim Tebow. So there's something that his brand, his service, his marketing, his message did to get him into the position he's in to begin with. Okay, so sitting from a place of arrogance and, oh, I'm better than you, that doesn't help anybody. And in fact, it hurts you and it hurts the people that you could potentially help. Okay, so I feel like that's a huge thing that your brand has to be able to do. It has to speak to where people are at and actually get them started. Okay, and then lastly, and the one I really want to dive into because I really feel like this is the most important, okay, is you're, you have to share your experiences through the story. Facts smell, stories tell. So being up at the National Speakers Association, um, I was on the board for two years, that's all they talk about, sharing your story, okay? Sharing the philosophy, sharing the metaphors, because what it does is it paints this picture, okay? And if you're looking at the human brain, Okay, the human brain is mostly influenced through the subconscious and the unconscious. And the subconscious and the upconscious, okay, is influenced through emotion and through feeling and through visuals. Okay, when we regurgitate information, stats, data, right? It's talking to the part of the brain, which is the conscious brain, which is responsible for five percent of people's human behaviors so if your goal is to really influence people get them to do something different we got to communicate in a way that actually gets people to move okay and it's through storytelling okay and it's through sharing those right and so um years ago or not years ago uh last year i had the opportunity Okay, to talk to Ed Milet at this mastermind. Okay, and at this mastermind, I got a chance to hear him speak. Uh, years ago, I spoke on the same stage as he did, and which was super awesome, by the way. Um, um, yeah, I won't won't get into all of that, but um, I went up and was talking to him, and you know, I said, you are probably the most amazing storyteller I have ever met in my entire life. Like, <laughs> how did you learn how to tell stories? Okay. And he said, he said, just through practice, through mentorship, through coaching, okay, through doing it over and over again, through speaking, through doing videos, and I said, what do you feel like the biggest thing that people really get stuck on in, in storytelling? And he said, people hear the thought or hear the logic of, oh, I need to share my story. I need to share my message. I need to share my experiences. And so they just blindly go out there and they just start sharing these messages and they start sharing these stories. Okay. And they don't really know where they're going with the story. They don't real. They really didn't articulate their message very well and weave their messages and their wisdom in the story. And it just doesn't have the impact that they're hoping that the story will give them in their in their life and in their business. And I was like, man, that is so damn true, right? And it reminds me of the scene um, of Billy Madison when he gets up to the stage. And he get and he's battling the guy for the business at the end, and he gets this um, topic that he has no clue of what he's saying, right? And he's in front of this audience, and he's looking at his first grade school teacher, because remember he had to go through a different grade every single week, um, and then compete with him at the end. And so he starts sharing a story he learned in kindergarten about the puppy who lost his way, right? And so he starts sharing this story and trying to revert it back to the question and the topic at hand. And everyone stands up and cheers, right? And then the judge goes, Mr. Madison, at no point in time were you even close to a rational thought. I reward you no points and God have mercy on your soul. And everyone who just listened to what you just said is now 
more dumb now that they listen to it. <laughs> and he's like, wow, a separate, uh, he's like, wow, a, a simple wrong would have done just fine. And I watched that again and I was just laughing my ass off. I was like, cause that's sometimes what we do when we don't understand how to share stories. We just start sharing and we don't really know where we're going and it doesn't have the influence that we hope the story will have. And then we come to this conclusion, well, Travis is full of shit and they're full of shit. Storytelling doesn't matter, right? And blah, blah, blah. And in fact, it really does, okay? And when you think of you know these influencers, Gary Vee, Grant Cardone, right? Brennan Bouchard, Tony Robbins, Keaton Hoskins, Andy Frisella, what first comes to mind is their story, okay? How did they get where they were to where they're at today? And that story and that story of contrast of going through the messes and achieving greatness and going through pain to the pleasure is what really separates you and your brand, okay? It articulates your messages, okay? Um, years ago, Ben Affleck was on uh, Howard Stern. And this was, I think, back in 2012, 2013. And he was saying, you know, earlier in my career, I wasn't really respected in Hollywood. Okay, I wasn't deemed one of the better actors up until the movie, The Town. That's what transformed my career. Okay, and so I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, The Town, but what made this movie a breakout movie for Ben Affleck is he was the producer and the main director of this movie. Okay, so he, he got to produce and direct him and how he was going to be portrayed and what the storyline was going to be. And he started to create his narrative. Okay. And every brand has a narrative and you're creating that narrative either through actually putting out a story and a narrative out there, or you're creating a narrative by not even putting out a narrative or a story at all. Okay. And so it's your duty to take control of your brand, take control of your narrative. What's the story that haters believe? What's the story of the trolls? What's the story that your clients believe? What's the story of your team members that they pass along? Okay, it all starts with you taking control of your narrative, okay? Your brand narrative is everything, okay? And that's what I really hope you take away, okay? And understanding that we need to look like a million dollar business. You can't build a million dollar business with a $20 wrapper, okay? And that's what we think we can do. We, chart it, we shortchange the most important part of our business, which is the moment we open our mouth, the moment people see, right? The moment we get an image, we start to form an opinion, okay? And the truth is, people's opinions of you do matter. Now, negative people's opinions, haters' opinions, right? Trolls, those don't necessarily matter, but the opinions of other people, okay, and how they view you actually do matter. It matters for your family, it matters for your life, it matters for your business. And so for people to say like, oh, I don't give a shit about what other people think. Yeah, you shouldn't give a shit about what other negative people think, but the truth is you should care about what people think. Okay. If someone says, Travis, you know what you said right there hurt my feelings. I can't just say, well, I don't care what you think. Like that's an opportunity for myself to improve. Okay. So you do need to care about what other people think and you do need to evolve. Okay. And if we don't evolve, okay, we look old. And when we look old, we don't look very valuable. And so growing up, I don't know if you remember seeing this. Okay, now they went through lots of upgrades, okay? They evolved their video, they evolved their graphics. And so I wanna show you the, so their newest one.
Okay. So which one's your brand? Are you the first one or a second one? Or are you the, I don't even have anything. Okay. The old saying is pictures or it didn't happen. Okay. That was the old saying. The new saying is video or it didn't happen, right? To use video is imperative in today's world. Okay. I don't know if you ever feel like this. This is how I feel. I feel, or I have felt, I felt like, man, I just have to be on all the time. I have to be influential and positive all the time. I have to be perfect all the time. I don't know if you've ever feel that as a leader. Okay. But why don't we take those moments where we are on point, we are influential and we video it and we get the best of the best. And now we use technology to scale our influence rather than trying to scale us who we are all the time. Okay. So I thought that was really cool and I wanted to share that with you. So coming back is, you know, and that's what we do mostly with our agency is we help get their brand story on video. Okay. We document it. We show a documentary. And so that way we can build trust, love, connection, rapport as soon as possible. Okay. And for most people, the way they market and the way they build a brand, it takes people longer to come to those conclusions. Okay. It takes longer. And so everyone goes through similar thought processes and emotions before they hire you. Okay. How long does that take for people to go through that thought process? Okay. And here's how it shows up. I'm not quite ready yet. I don't have the money. Um, it's, it's too much. Well, I need to talk to my wife, right? All of those are an example of no trust, no connection. Okay. They don't love what you have. There's no rapport. And so the goal of the brand is to fast forward. Okay. Those things that happen. And we all go through things at different phases. Let's say, I mean, if you, if you're married right now, or maybe you're single, right? How long does it take you to become official with that person? How long did it take you to move in with them? How long did it take you to marriage them? And depending upon how much quality and quantity time you spent with them, okay, how vulnerable and raw they were and what experiences that you went through or saw that they went through, all of those things account in how fast you're willing to actually commit. Okay. And the same is true with your ideal clients. How fast are they willing to commit to your program? How fast are they willing to commit to the things that you're offering? And all of that depends upon how much they, you build trust, rapport, love, connection, okay. Empathy, all those different things. And so your brand, okay, is what does that. It attracts top level talent. Okay. It helps you scale systems. It helps you create processes within your business. Okay. So that is just a little, little snapshot on what people go through. Okay. In the first eight years of business. And some can go through it a little bit faster. Some people can go through it even longer. Okay. I've put together a process that goes what much deeper that brings it from eight years down to eight weeks. Okay. So what you have to remember is time is an illusion. Man created time. We actually base time based upon our solar system. Why is it a calendar year is 365 days? It's like 365 days point one, right? Why is that? Is because that's how long it takes the earth to go around the sun one time. Okay. Why is it 24 hours in a day? Well, that's how long it takes the earth to rotate once 24 hours. Okay. Venus, they say is 256 hours. Okay. Uranus, they said is 16 hours. Uh, Mars is similar to us, 25 hours. Okay. And so some people in their business, they can get something done in 24 hours, that same exact sequence, that same exact thing for somebody else can can be like they're on Venus. It takes them 256 days to actually get it done or come to that conclusion, right? So time is an illusion based around movement. Okay. And so our brand is that the brand creates movement. It creates influence. So processes happen so much faster. 
okay? Because the problem is not that you can't make a million dollars in a, it, the, yeah. The problem is not that you can't make a million dollars, okay? The problem is you can't make a million dollars in the time span that you actually want to make a million dollars, okay? Just hold that thought for a second, okay? It's because time is an illusion. We get stuck on the time. So the brand is what fast forwards that. So now that way we're making the money in the time span that we actually want to make. Okay. So that was a huge epiphany for me. Like it's not that I can't make a million dollars. I can make a million dollars. I just need a way of getting time on my side through the movement of my brand to get out the messages and sequences it needs to create the value that creates the exchange with money. Okay. So a lot of this is going into like business mindset and leadership mindset. And that's what a brand does. It's about being a better leader. And one of the best, in my opinion, best business leaders in the world is Steve Jobs. And I love, love, love this quote. Okay. And I have this quote on my wall in my last house and I need to get it up here again. It says, here's to the crazy ones. The misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or nullify them, but the one thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. Because the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones that do think different. Okay, and I don't know if that was him that really shared it, but that quote is most connected with him. And isn't that crazy that even though he's not the originator of that quote, everyone connects that quote to him. Okay. And that's what you want your brand to do. You want your brand to connect these messages back to you. Okay. Not that you want to steal messages, but you want to create original messages that have evolved from another message and make it your own. So people internalize that. Okay. And I do believe that people who are crazy enough. Okay. Cause you gotta be crazy. They said the most successful entrepreneurs in the world, they have a uh, small amounts of psycho and sociopath within them, right? Cause you gotta be a psycho to invest in the business. You gotta be psycho to turn down the guaranteed money and to go out into the world and say, Hey, I can create this on my own. Like going to the next level is always a little scary. It's always a little psycho, right? And so that's what you have to embrace. You have to embrace that there's going to be sacrifices and investments along the way. Okay. And if you look at some of the biggest brands, Ford, okay, that's a last name. Walgreens, that's a last name. Disney, that's a last name. Harley Davidson is two last names. Okay. Lamborghini, Gucci, Dodge, right? These are all last names. Your last name is for the world. Your first name is for you. Okay. And since the dawn of time, we as human beings have been passing on our mark. Okay. Through images. What is your mark? What is the mark and the message that is going to transform the world? What is the message you want to pass down to your kids? What is the legacy that you want to leave? Okay. And, and so I just really believe that happiness is to, to be happy and to be fulfilled is all about progressing. And when we're progressing on our business, which is our creations, that's what makes us happy. I believe God is very, very happy because he's constantly creating. He's constantly growing and evolving. And when we grow and we evolve and we serve, that is the gift of life. Okay. And I want to help you do that. And so um, are you ready for your free gift? This is something that I am so excited and would love for you to come. So what you're going to get is a business scaling strategy session. We talked about a lot. There's probably a lot of questions. There's probably a lot of things that you have. I would love to offer you a free business scaling branding strategy session. And we're going to go deeper into all five phases of your business. Okay. Leadership discovery, branding, marketing, your business model, your sales process. Okay. With a lot of people, what I've really noticed is that the way they've developed their processes in their services, it's almost, it, it basically leaves them stuck with where they're at. Sometimes we're following a model that's just never going to work at the next level. 
okay? We want to create that six-figure business or the half million mark or the seven-figure mark, but yet we're working a business model that's only going to allow us to make $50,000 a year or $40,000 a year. So if you have, if that's how much money you're making right now, that's exactly where your model is stuck, okay? And if it's stuck on that, it's usually based upon okay, how we're generating the leads and how we're generating the leads is based upon the brand and our messaging. So uh, this is going to be an audit. We're going to sit down probably on Zoom for 90 minutes. We're going to go through everything, okay? Um, we're going to get real. We're going to get raw. We're going to identify what are you doing great because the truth of it is you're probably doing a lot of great things in your business. We're going to be going off, what are you doing okay? And then what are you not doing good at? Where are you struggling? Okay. And sorry, I'm getting a little hiccups right now from uh, drinking so much water. Um, so we're going to go into all of that in this branding session. Okay. It's 90 minutes. Okay. There's no obligation. There's no sell. Okay. If after the session, there's some interest in what we have to offer, we can explore what that looks like. Okay. People always ask, you know, how much are programs? Well, it just kind of depends on where you're at, where you want to go. We always have a guarantee with our programs. Okay. Which means we go until we hit that guarantee. Right. But it, we have programs from $2,000 all up to $100,000. So again, it just depends on where you're at and where you want to go. Okay. So to get that, go to the link below. Okay. <clears throat> or else go to bnextgen.com slash session. Okay. Go fill out the form, get super detailed. Once you fill out the form, you'll also get another free ebook. Okay. It goes in deeper into the four archetypes of leadership and coaching. Okay, that one you'll really want. It's a short read, powerful, and I relate everything back to the brand through those four archetypes we talked earlier, lover, magician, warrior, and king. Okay, once you fill out that form, manager or client manager will reach out to you and will schedule a session. Okay, get prepared. Okay, I want you to go through your Instagram, your Facebook. Okay, I want you... Uh, to really see how many followers you have. I want you to uh, make sure you have it very clearly arc articulated on your different programs. Show me your flyers, have your websites available. So as much as you can bring to that session as possible, okay, your P&L, profit and loss, loss statements, we're going to dive deep. You're going to take a lot from the session based upon how willing you are to be vulnerable. Okay. And being vulnerable is being open. Okay. It's being open to share. And the more open you are, the more I can give to you. Sometimes we want to receive everything in the world, but that we're closed off from receiving it. Okay. So we're going to dive in deep. There's no judgment. I've seen whatever you're looking at or doing a million times. Okay. But let's talk about where you're at, where do you want to be, where you see yourself, all right, what's important to you, what are your barriers holding you back, what's your game plan right now, and then we'll share my 10,000 foot view of all those things and start to draw some steps on what you can do to move forward, okay? If it's a great fit, we can serve you, maybe it's connecting you with someone else, um, I don't know what it might be. Maybe it might just be that session and maybe later in the year you hire us. I don't know what's going to come from the session. All I know is you're going to walk away with a lot of value and a lot that you can take within your business to make some big moves. Okay. I want to end with this. Okay. Be inspired in what you're doing. Okay. Love what you're doing. Build your business around your life, not your life around your business. What do you enjoy doing? Who do you enjoy serving? Like constantly be in that inspired state. Okay. Inspired means in spirit. Okay. And when we're in spirit, it's not grinding to get results. It's through flow. We get results. Okay. Be next gen, find a way to do it different, innovative. Okay. Better, right? Be next gen and understand that you do have something that the world needs. Okay. There are people waking up right now on their knees, begging, okay. Begging for someone like you to show up in their life. The world needs you and what you have, okay? You're a brand follower, which makes you a brand leader, okay? Stand up and lead what you followed, okay? The world needs that.
Okay, and I'd love to be a part of that journey. Again, to get the session, bnextgen.com slash session. Um, if you know of anyone else that can benefit from this uh, training, send the link over. Um, I would love to meet you, love to get to know you. Make a great day, and again, be inspired in what you're doing. Be next gen. As always, the world needs you. Good talk.